Today's episode of Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report is on piriformis syndrome. Now you may be asking yourself, what is piriformis syndrome? Piriformis syndrome is a form of sciatica. Sciatica is one of the main reasons that people go to a doctor of chiropractic. Sciatica can be debilitating, especially if you're an athlete. It's debilitating for anybody, but especially if you're an athlete. What sciatica is? Sciatica is a nerve impingement condition. The piriformis muscle is impinging or compressing the sciatic nerve. That's where the name piriformis syndrome comes from. The symptoms of this condition can be felt in the gluteal region and all the way down the leg. The sciatic nerve is the longest and thickest nerve in the entire body. It's the primary nerve in the lower extremity. It begins in the gluteal region and has branches that reach all the way down into the toes. Now I'm going to give you a quick anatomy lesson on how the, the nervous system in the lower body works, where the sciatic nerve comes from. There are spinal nerves that branch off the spinal cord in each region of the body. The ones that branch off in the lumbar spine and in the sacral area form two networks of nerves. These networks of nerves are called a plexus, the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus. The sciatic nerve originates or emerges from these two plexus, from these two networks of nerves, and it originates in the gluteal region almost directly beneath the piriformis muscle. Now, the sciatic nerve, like I said, it has branches that run all the way down the leg, some of them going into the toes. The piriformis muscle is a gluteal muscle. It starts on the sacrum, on the front part of the sacrum. It is pyramidal shaped and it's flat and it runs laterally across the gluteal region and attaches to the outside part of the femur, which is the thigh bone in a part called the, the greater trochanter. Now, when that muscle gets tight or what we call hypertonic, it can press down, compress on that sciatic nerve or impinge that sciatic nerve, and that is the source of piriformis syndrome. The concentric or positive action of the piriformis muscle is external rotation of the thigh. What that means is that when the piriformis muscle contracts in a positive manner, it turns the thigh outwards. When the piriformis muscle becomes hypertonic or extremely tight, it can press down or compress or impinge the sciatic nerve and be the source of sciatica. Like I said before, that's where the term piriformis syndrome comes from, because the piriformis muscle is the source of the symptoms. Now, the symptoms of sciatica usually originate in the gluteal region right underneath the piriformis muscle and they travel down into the thigh into the posterior lateral aspect of the thigh. Now what does that mean? The posterior aspect of the thigh is the back part of the thigh. The lateral aspect is the outside of the thigh. So usually it's in that region. It may be in both or it may be in one or the other. And then the symptoms will travel down into the lower leg and may go down all the way to the toes. Now these symptoms, they can be severe. They can be severely limited. Any motion or any activity can cause pain or be painful when piriformis syndrome is present. These symptoms can be extremely intense. The symptoms are sharp, shooting, shock-like pain, numbness, tingling, burning, weakness in the muscle, limited pain-free range of motion, decreased reflexes. There can also be uh, just a limited motion pain with anything that we're doing. Uh, pain, limited motion in the hip or in the spine. Other symptoms of piriformis syndrome include tenderness, especially right at the piriformis muscle. Many times just pressing down on the piriformis muscle will make the symptoms not only in that area, but through the entire course of the sciatic nerve worse. Like I said, the symptoms begin in the gluteal region, they go down into the thigh, into the lower leg, and may possibly go into the toes. These symptoms are basically along the course of the distribution of the sciatic nerve. 
Now, one positive about piriformis syndrome is in most cases, it only occurs on one side or what we call unilateral. So that's a positive. Even though this condition is extremely debilitating and the symptoms are severe and intense, I'm trying to look at the positives, and one positive is usually it occurs only on one side. Now, certain activities, if the symptoms are present, certain activities will make these symptoms much worse. Like I said, sometimes any motion can be extremely limited and painful with sciatica, but certain things such as any, anything weight-bearing, walking, standing, uh, if you try to run, if you try to jump, especially if you try to go up and down steps that will really make the symptoms worse. Uh, spine motions, hip motions, uh, spine motions bending forward at the waist, that may definitely increase these symptoms. So there's a lot of things that can increase the symptoms. Also, uh, if, if you're moving your hips up and down like this, uh, sort of like a Zumba type of an action where the hips are moving up and down, Zumba is a great exercise, but if you have sciatica, it's going to be extremely painful to do those types of movements. Other things that make it worse, uh, things like bike riding. Uh, bike riding is a, is a great exercise, but if you have sciatica, if you have piriformis syndrome, bike riding may be extremely difficult to perform when you have these symptoms. Almost any type of activity, any type of exercise is going to be extremely difficult when you have sciatica. Uh, I have seen patients who they have a very difficult time just getting in and out of their car just because of the twisting motion. They may have a difficult time getting up and down out of a chair because the mus muscles are so tight and the symptoms are so severe. Piriformis syndrome can have a traumatic or a non-traumatic onset. When we speak about the non-traumatic, it's an overuse type of an injury. I've discussed the overtraining before. I've discussed the overuse injuries in most of my doctor's level sports medicine reports, but I'm going to talk about it for just a minute here. Overtraining is doing too much too soon or just that repetitive submaximal load over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, doing that same activity again and again and again. Combining that with inadequate rest between our training sessions and some type of biomechanical fault. So that's where the non-traumatic type of piriformis syndrome comes in. Many times piriformis syndrome begins in a traumatic fashion. Now it doesn't have to be something where it's a contact, say you're playing sports and you get hit in the gluteal region, you may get hit with a baseball or during a football game or something. That can happen. But in most cases, someone will be doing an activity and that symptoms will begin instantly. So the source of the symptoms has been building up for a long time. It's been brewing for a while. And then all of a sudden, one thing, it can be something very, very small, can cause the symptoms to begin. Uh, the contributing factors, I always like to talk about the intrinsic factors and the extrinsic factors. The extrinsic factors obviously are your training methods and also your ergonomics, how you're moving, how you're sitting, all that adds up. But when we speak about the non-traumatic onset of piriformis syndrome, we want to make sure that you have a proper training routine and you are giving yourself adequate rest between your training sessions. You want to make sure that you are strengthening all of your muscles, not just doing the same exercises repeatedly. Give yourself adequate rest between your training sessions. Then we talk about the intrinsic contributing factors. Many times with piriformis syndrome, the intrinsic contributing factors are weakness in the core and weakness in the gluteal muscles. The piriformis muscle is a muscle that has a lot to do. So you have to make sure that that is strong, but you have to make sure that all the muscles around it are strong too. So there is not an increased demand placed on the piriformis muscle. So make sure that your core muscles are strong. Make sure that your lumbar muscles are strong, your gluteal muscles are strong, your, your medial thigh muscles are strong. Everything works together. So you wanna make sure that you have strength 
in the gluteal region, strength in your core, also that you have flexibility in your gluteal muscles, in your spine, and in your hip and thigh muscles. Prevention is key in all sports injuries, but especially in our non-traumatic sports injuries or in a sports injury where the source has just been building for a long period of time. So piriformis syndrome fits into both of those categories. When we think about a non-traumatic source and we think about one instant that brought on the pain but the source has been brewing for a long time, piriformis syndrome is right there. Prevention, prevention, prevention. And I say this on almost every episode of Dr. Ozella's Sports Medicine Report, but prevention is easier, faster, and less expensive than rehabilitation. Do everything that you possibly can to prevent piriformis syndrome. It means stretching the piriformis muscle, foam rolling the piriformis muscle, strengthening your core, strengthening your gluteal muscles, basically eliminating the intrinsic factors. Also, you want to strengthen the entire kinetic chain from your feet all the way up to your spine and from the top of your head all the way down. When I speak about the kinetic chain for the piriformis syndrome, I mean the lumbar spine, the pelvis, the hips, the thighs, the lower leg and the feet. If symptoms should occur, seek professional care immediately and begin your self-treatment immediately. In most cases, the quicker that you start on the path of proper healing, the sooner you will return to activity. Now, like I said, in most cases, piriformis syndrome is a serious injury. It is impingement on the sciatic nerve. This is a type of condition that I see in my office as a doctor of chiropractic all the time. As a doctor of chiropractic, if someone comes into my office with piriformis syndrome, obviously they have paperwork to fill out, then there's a consultation, then the examination, and then the report of findings where I explain everything to them. But if I'm going to treat this person, if I think I can help them out, I will perform the chiropractic adjustment to whatever area needs to be adjusted. The chiropractic adjustment restores proper skeletal motion to the joints and it also helps to optimize nerve flow. So chiropractic care is great for nerve impingement conditions such as piriformis syndrome. With your self-treatment, first of all, you want to stretch if you can. You want to move if you can. Move through a pain-free range of motion. And the reason I say that is because we want to lessen the tightness in the piriformis muscle. So move around as much as you can. Staying in one position may feel good for a short amount of time, but in the long run, it is going to cause issues. You want to stretch, you want to move. You may need to apply ice over the piriformis muscle uh, in the very beginning just to help to eliminate or help to lessen the symptoms and help to lessen any swelling. You are going to have to have I should say a long recovery period, but it's going to take some time. So you're going to have to have patience. Do things such as foam rolling. If you can do that, foam roll the piriformis muscle. I have a video that I'm going to attach to the playlist uh, after this video. Uh, foam roll the piriformis muscle. There's several different ways you can do it. That's a great preventative thing, but also if you have those symptoms and you could perform the foam rolling, Go ahead and do it. Use very mild pressure. You can perform nerve slide exercises. Nerve slides can be utilized for preventative measures. They can be utilized when symptoms first appear. They can be utilized as rehabilitation and also to prevent a recurrence. Say if you start to feel the symptoms a little bit, go ahead and start doing some nerve slide exercises. Nerve slide exercises are non-exertion, non-resistance motion exercises that help to lessen scar tissue encasement on the nerve. So basically they are going to take pressure off of the nerves. I have several nerve slide videos that I'm going to attach to the playlist that I will make for this video. One of them is on the sciatic nerve. So go ahead and do that exercise. It will help you a great deal.
When you return to training following a bout of piriformis syndrome, there's several things that you want to keep in mind. One thing that should help you a great deal is what I call pull-up bar hanging traction. After you're done training, it could be a run, it could be a weightlifting session, go to the pull-up bar and grab the pull-up bar and just hang straight down. That is going to help to decompress the spine which always helps in any type of low back injury or nerve impingement condition. So this is a, a procedure that you should do. Hold on, it doesn't matter if you hold on for just 20 seconds or 60 seconds. You don't wanna be squeezing so hard that it's hurting your grip. It's not a grip strengthening exercise. You wanna to try to relax. If you can place your feet on something very, very lightly, place your toes on something, that works even better because that allows that spine to decompress even more with less core engagements. Uh, you also want to do proprioceptive training. That is training where you are working on an uneven surface or, or an unbalanced surface. This will help you a large amount to help to strengthen structures and also help to improve your proprioception, which is the body's awareness of where it's at in nature. Another thing that you want to do, well, we had already talked about the stretching and the strengthening, so I'm not going to really get into that too much, but there's other things that you want to do also, and that is to keep in mind to work the entire kinetic chain. I know I already mentioned that once, but it's extremely important, so I'm going to repeat that. Work the entire kinetic chain. In conclusion, piriformis syndrome is an extremely tough condition. It's extremely painful. The symptoms are intense. This is not a condition that you want to get. Do everything that you possibly can to prevent this condition. If you get it, do everything you possibly can to rehabilitate this condition and to prevent a recurrence. I want to thank everyone for watching today's episode of Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report. Please feel free to like this video. Also, please feel free to leave any feedback, suggestions, or questions in the comments section below. I will try to get back to your questions as soon as I possibly can. Piriformis syndrome is a condition, like I said, that is extremely painful. Pier or, uh, sciatica is a chapter in my book running maximize performance and minimize injuries is chapter four page 20. you can go to my website to get additional information on the book if you'd like to but again i want to thank everybody for viewing today's episode of dr zello sports medicine report you know what i'm going to say train hard train smart stay injury free and accomplish your goals I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada.